Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you for your word. It is the truth, and we do receive it, written in our heart, written in our mind. Thank you for the revelation of it. We're taking hold of it, the endures of it, and it will bring forth much fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated, if you would. This morning, we began talking to you on the subject of denying yourself and your own ways and living unto him. We're going to continue on that subject tonight a very important subject for all Christians. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. He said to them all, this is Jesus speaking, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take, take up his cross daily, and follow me. These are all commanding statements. When it says let him deny himself, it kind of waters this down because you would think that that's just kind of a good idea type of thing, but it's not. It is an imperative mood verb. It should be translated, deny yourself, a command given to every one of us. Take up his cross daily is also a command, and follow me is a command. And so, in order to follow him, which is following the word, there are some things that we're supposed to do first. Before that, we're going to take up our cross daily, which is the crucifying of the flesh. And before that, we're going to deny ourselves. You can't get to the place of following him unless you have taken up your cross daily and crucified the flesh, otherwise you'll walk in it, and that's not following him. And come to the place of denying yourself. You and I must deny ourselves. When we talk about deny, as we pointed out this morning, this word, when you look it up in the Greek, means to lose sight of oneself. God wants you to lose sight of yourself and watch walking in your own ways and doing what you want. Lose sight of one's own interests. Live a selfless life and disregard for oneself. Instead, you're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. You're going to follow Him. You're going to be obedient to Him and do what He wants you to do. Over in Mark's account, Mark chapter 8, verse 34, when he called the people unto him with the disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel's. You do this not only for the sake of Jesus, but also for the gospel. The same shall save it. We talk about the word life, it's the word suke, referring to the soul life the soul realm directed life. If you try to save or preserve your soul realm life, you're going to destroy it. This is the word apollomy, which means to destroy it. But whosoever shall destroy or essentially put out of the way entirely, which is a better understanding of what this means, you're going to put out of the way entirely a soul realm directed life. You're not going to walk according to the soul. You're going to walk by the Spirit. For my sake and for the gospels, because you're going to serve him. The same shall save it and shall preserve it, because you will walk in the ways of the Spirit, being obedient to the things that he tells you to do. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose or bring injury and damage and loss to his own soul? Some translations have even translated as to forfeit his life. The word soul is really whether or forfeit his soul. Give it up because he's not walking according to the ways of the word of God. It's quite a statement. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? <laughs> he can't. He's got to guard his soul, and he's, as we talked about, he's got to walk in the ways of the Lord and yield his soul to the Spirit. Whosoever therefore will be ashamed of me, that would be of Jesus or the word, and of my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation. We live in an adulterous and sinful generation, that's for sure. We cannot be ashamed of him in the midst of what is going on in the world. Of him also so the son, son of man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Never be ashamed of Jesus, of his words. Do what he says, follow his ways. And you must not allow the effects of the sinful, adulterous generation to get a hold of you. We must walk in his ways and yield unto the Lord. Now, it's also important to realize 
that you must deny yourself because you don't belong to yourself. You now belong to the Lord. You're not going to direct your life. 1 Corinthians 6.19 says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you're not your own. You are not your own. Don't think for a second your own. Why? It goes on and says, For you're bought with a price. You are purchased by Jesus Christ. Who was I purchased from? I was purchased out from under authority to the devil because the devil had control over all of us because of the fall of man. We've been bought with a price and now an exchange has occurred where we came out from Satan's authority into now the authority of Jesus Christ. And so therefore, we're to glorify God in our body and our spirit, which are God's. God wants you to glorify Him in everything that you do. Your body is not yours. You cannot do what you want with your body. You are to yield your body to be obedient to the Word of God and do what He says. You are to present it to be holy. Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. You are to present your body as holy before the Lord, acceptable, well-pleasing unto God, which is your reasonable service. He expects every one of us to do this. And because we've been bought with a price, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 and 15, declares that you are not to live unto yourself any longer. Verse 14, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, if one died for all, which was Jesus, and he did, then we're all dead. Well, we were all spiritually dead, that's right, under Satan's dominion, separated from him. And that he died for all, that they which live, and who are the ones now that live? All those that have been born again. We now have been born again, and we come into relationship with him. Should not henceforth live unto themselves. We can't live unto ourselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Every single believer in Jesus Christ is to deny himself. He is to live unto him. He is not to live unto himself. As you now are bought with a price, and you are to follow the way of the Lord and do all the things that he commands us to do. That means we cannot be walking in our own ways. We saw many scriptures this morning. We're going to see more this evening. One of the scriptures that we noticed in Isaiah chapter 65 Verse 2, I spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people. Why were they rebellious? Which walketh in a way that was not good. And what was not good? After their own thoughts. Can you walk after your own thoughts and be obedient to God? No. You must submit your mind to God and walk after His thoughts, His ways, which is the Word of God. Anything that's according to your own thoughts, inconsistent with the Word, is a way that's not good. And it actually makes you rebellious to God. And those who are rebellious, they're the ones that have all kinds of problems. The Bible says if you obey, you'll eat the fruit of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured with a sword. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. Therefore, we cannot walk after our own thoughts or our own ways any longer. God wants you to deny yourself and walk in his ways. Moses was one, remember, that he was in Pharaoh's house and he had the opportunity there to live a high life, certainly. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 24, look what it says about him. By faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. We can't walk after the ways of sin. We cannot enjoy the pleasures of sin. You and I must walk after the ways of the Lord. And that includes suffering affliction with the people of God because there will be persecution for righteousness' sake. God wants you to put Him first place. We cannot deny deny uh, him by doing what we want to do. We must deny ourselves and submit to the way of the Lord. Over in 1 Kings, we see 
another attitude as well that is correct. 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 9, talking about Solomon here. Here's where he's praying. And he says to the Lord, Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who's able to judge this thy so great a people? He was more interested in what God wanted, not for his own interests. He wasn't interested in what he wanted. The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. He pleased the fact that, you know, this guy was seeking after this. And God said to him, Because thou hast asked this thing, it's not asked for thyself. Long life. Either hast asked riches for thyself. He wasn't thinking about himself. He was thinking about what God wanted. That's what God expects of you and me. Nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, or hast asked for thyself, understand, but you asked instead for yourself understanding to discern judgment, that he would do the right thing in the sight of the Lord. That's what God wants. He said, Behold, I've done according to thy words. Lo, I've given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall arise like unto thee. Because he approached the right way. He wanted what God want, wanted for him. He didn't want what he wanted. This has got to be our attitude. We are going to do what is right. You are bought with a price. You are to deny yourself. And Ezra, chapter 10, Verse 11, he said, Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers and do his pleasure. Do what is right in his sight. Separate yourselves and the people of the land from all the strange wives that they should have never taken to begin with. They had disobeyed what God told them to do. So they were to follow the Lord and obey him. God expects us to choose the way of the Lord. In Psalms chapter 5, Verse 4. So they had to deny themselves. They had to do what God said. Psalms 5, verse 4. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. He didn't want any wickedness in you. He doesn't want evil dwell with you. That's why you've got to get rid of all the evil out of your life. You've got to deny yourself, turn away from the things that are not right in the sight of the Lord. Psalms 103, verse 21. We're to please the Lord. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, you ministers of his that do his pleasure. If you do his pleasure, you're not following your ways. You're doing what he wants you to do. You deny yourself, you're going to serve the Lord in everything that you do because his way is right. And look what happens if you order your life after the way of the Lord. Proverbs 16, verse 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. The enemies, they, they, they'll be at peace with you. You won't have wars against you. You'll be walking in the ways of the Lord. God wants your way to be pleasing unto the Lord. In Proverbs 22, verse 17, he says this, Bow down, down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply thine heart to my knowledge. We've got to hear the word, apply our heart. We're going to get knowledge. Hear his word. For it's a pleasant thing if thou keep them within thee. They shall with all be fitted in thy lips, in your lips, or to be in your mouth. The word of God is to be coming out of you. That thy trust may be in the Lord. And I have known daily to thee this day, even to thee. Otherwise, God has want you to have his word in your mouth, not your words. You're to guard this word, keep it in your mouth. It's to be coming out of you. You're going to be, it's going to be a pleasant thing unto the Lord if you will do the things that he tells you to do. Now over in Jeremiah, chapter 23, there were problems with those ones who were the so-called prophets. Jeremiah 23, verse 16. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They weren't speaking things that were right at all. You never hearken to anything that is not right. It's not in line with the word of God. Notice they were speaking a vision of their own heart. Remember, when you're prophesying, you don't speak anything that, out of your own heart or out of your own knowledge. You just speak what the Lord has given you by the Holy Spirit. And so they were prophesying a wrong thing and deceiving the people. 
And they were, we cannot allow that. There's many people that do that today. You can tell because the things they prophesy are not coming to pass. It couldn't have been from the Lord, otherwise they would have come to pass. That's the test that should come to pass. Jeremiah 31, verse 30. Everyone shall die for his own iniquity. See, these prophets, they, they, they have a sentence of death upon them, all the ones in the false, false prophets in the end. Everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eats a sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. God wants us to have life. But you're not going to have life if you walk in sin. You know, you're going to have death. But what's the wages of sin? The wages of sin is death. And this also means that you and I, we cannot think in our minds that we've got it together and that we're going to walk okay in our sight. No. We've got to put the word first place. Isaiah 5.21, Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight, or think that they perceive and understand in their own sight. They're kidding themselves. You're only going to be wise in the measure that you have the Word of God in you, the wisdom that comes from God, and having the, being prudent or perceiving, understanding things that are coming from the Lord, that are right, and they're going to be in line with the Word of God. They will be right on the mark. Do not think of yourself wise in your own eyes or prudent in your own sight. Anything that is given to you that's going to be right is all going to come from the Lord anyway. All the glory goes to Him. In Isaiah chapter 58, verse 13, Thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, call the Sabbath a delight. This is all in the Old Testament area. Aaron, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him. And then notice what he says. How do you honor him? Not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. Anything that's out of the own, your own ways, your own pleasure, your own words, were not acceptable. He wants us to speak His words. He wants us to do, walk in His ways. Remember, our ways are not His ways. And He wants us to do His pleasure and carry out the things that He has called us to do. If we do that, then you delight yourself in the Lord. He'll cause you to ride upon the high places of the earth, feed you with the heritage of Jacob thy father, which was great prosperity in all things. But the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. God wants you to delight in Him and do the things that He says. Over in Mark, chapter 7, we must deny ourselves when it comes to the things that we believe and the things that we follow after and the things that we hold as the truth. In Mark chapter 7, verse 9, he says, Full well you reject the commandment of God that you may keep their own tradition. They didn't want to believe the commandments that were coming from Jesus Christ. They wanted to keep their own tradition. They wanted to follow their own ways, man's traditions, doctrines of men, doctrines which are really from the devil. That's why we've got to check everything out in line with the Word and see whether it's right or is it a tradition. If it's not in line with the Lord, it's a tradition of men. And these guys were rejecting the commandment of God, keeping their own tradition. They didn't want to change. A lot of times, traditions just won't die very easily. People don't want to let go of it, even when they've been presented with truth and find out that it's false. We've seen that happen in so many areas. Now, we've got to always be ready to repent, change our mind if we're something that we see is wrong. And we need to be ready to reject traditions of men and be ready to accept the commandments of God. Well, they were doing the exact opposite. That was a great mistake. People are still doing it today. They don't want to let go. We, we believe such and such, even though you present scriptures to them. You know, and We're going to pray to Jesus, even though the Bible says you pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. You know, We're going to plead the blood, even though nobody ever did it in the Bible any place. <laughs> we're going to do all these things that they want. You know. We don't have any demons in us, even though the Bible says we're supposed to cast out demons for every believer. Well, they, won't, they just want to follow traditions of men. They want to keep their own traditions instead of following the truth of the Word of God. No, we've got to deny ourselves and accept the Word of God. In John chapter 6, verse 38, verse 38, he said, For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Jesus didn't come to do anything of himself. 
He did not his own will. He did not do anything that he wanted. He only came to do the will of him that sent me. Where have you come down from? Well, you came down from heaven too. You say, well, I haven't been there yet. Well, your spirit came from heaven. That's where you are a citizen of heaven. So you are an ambassador for Christ, which means you have come from there, whether you realize it or not, right? So because you're an ambassador for Christ, you are come down not to do your own will, but the will of Jesus Christ, and the will of the Father, and carry out the things of the Word of God. That's what God wants. In John chapter 8, verse 50, John 8, verse 50, Jesus said, I seek not mine own glory. There's one that seeketh and judgeth. He wasn't seeking his own glory. No, he was seeking what the Father wanted him to do. And that's exactly what you and I must do. In fact, back in John chapter 5, in verse 30, he made this statement. I can of my own self do nothing. You can't do anything of your own self either. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will. That's a person who's denied himself, hadn't he? And he's seeking not his own will. But the will of the Father which hath sent me. That means he had a will, but he didn't seek his will, his own will. You have a will, but you need to submit your will to the Word of God and make the decision that I'm going to choose the things that God wants me to do, not decide on my own what I want to do. He did not seek his own will, but instead he sought the will of the Father. Well, how am I going to know the will of the Father? The Word. Everything needs to be checked in line with the Word of God to see whether it is right or not. That's what God expects for every single one of us. We've got to submit to God's Word. In Romans chapter 1, we pick up here in verse 21. Because that when they knew God, these are people that knew God at one point, they glorify Him not as God, they weren't thankful. They became vain in their imaginations. Their foolish heart was darkened. Well, they certainly hadn't denied themselves. They were walking in their own ways now. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. They changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. It's crazy. Change, and it goes on in verse 24, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. If you don't submit to God's ways, he'll give you up to uncleanness, to all kinds of things. And what happened to these guys? The lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, they got into homosexuality because they rejected the word of God and the truth. Look what's going on in the world today. All these are ones who have rejected the truth of the word. They changed the truth of God into a lie. Well, we believe it's this. We got our own belief. No. They change the truth of God into a lie, worship and serve the creature. We're going to serve ourselves more than the Creator who is blessed forever. What a mistake. These guys are given up unto their own loss. For this cause God gave them up into vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Likewise the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, receiving themselves that recompense of the air which was meat terrible. It's going on today, isn't it? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, they don't want to know His Word. God gave them to a reprobate mind to do those things that are not convenient. God will let you choose to do the things you want, even though they're wrong. He wants you instead to deny yourself, put the Word of God first place, do what He says according to His Word. You cannot walk in your own ways, or you'll be given over to a reprobate mind. And you'll end up doing things and you think they're okay because man always thinks he's doing right in his own sight and yet he's deceived because he's not following the way of the Lord. The Jews didn't do what was right either. Instead of doing what God said, they went about establishing their own righteousness. They had all their own traditions. Romans 10, <coughs> verse 3. <coughs> For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. You've got to submit yourself unto the righteousness of God, which is the Word of God, and be a hearer and a doer of that Word. 
That's how they got messed up. And look what happened to them because they never would submit. They wouldn't follow. They, they missed everything. They missed the visitation. When God showed up through Jesus Christ to accomplish the redemption, they missed everything. Ended up getting judged, scattered forever you know, all over the place, never could become a nation again because of the judgment on them until 1948. They're going to get their chance again, though, and they're going to repent, praise God. Romans chapter 12, verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things. Don't get your eyes on high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits your own conceits, your own ways, things that, that you want to do. No. We must deny ourself. What happens if we're walking in our own ways? Well, we're walking in the flesh. Can you please God if you're walking in the flesh? No. Romans 8, 8 says, So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. It's impossible. How, would you, how could you get in the flesh? Because you've got a carnal mind. A carnal mind is enmity against God because it's not subject to the law of God. That means anything going on in your mind that's not submitted to the Word, or not renewed to the Word, or not thinking according to the Word, you've got a carnal mind, and your mind is enmity against the Lord. It hasn't been sub in sub it's not sub subject to the law of God. That's why we've got to get our mind renewed to get a spiritual mind. A carnal mind produces death, but a spiritual mind produces life and peace, as we see. So, those that are in the flesh, they can't please God. Now, what happens if you live after the flesh? That's a person who hasn't denied themselves. Romans 8, 13 says, If you live after the flesh, you shall die. Now, you're not going to be saved. You're not going to have life. If you, through the Spirit, do mortify and put to death the deeds of the body, you shall live. Every one of us must crucify the flesh, remember, and mortify and put to death the deeds of the body if you are going to have life. We're to live unto him, see. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. God wants you to deny yourself and to serve the Lord and do everything that he wants you to do. Look what he says in verse 24. Let no man seek his own. We don't seek our own. But every man another's wealth, otherwise to help them to prosper and be blessed. Give out to others, minister to others, and it'll come back unto you. Otherwise, we're not self-seeking. We don't seek for ourselves. Instead, we seek to do the things that God wants. In fact, verse 33, look what he says. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. I want to seek the profit of many so they'll be saved. See, we're not going to seek after ourselves. Bless us for no more, forget about everybody else. No, that's not it. That's a person who's living a selfish life. You are called to deny yourself and live unto the Lord. And every one of us are to walk in love at all times. Well, if you're walking in love, what does it say about love in verse 5? 1 Corinthians 13, 5, does not behave itself unseemly and seeks not her own. Love doesn't seek her own. Love seeks to minister to other people instead. It's not easily provoked, doesn't think any evil. People who think evil and are easily provoked and so forth, and behaving themselves unseemly or unbecomingly or rudely, are selfish. Love and selfishness are opposites. We must deny ourselves, and we cannot live a selfish life. We saw the scripture this morning, but we'll look at it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5. This they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord. You need to first of all give yourself to the Lord. Truly give yourself to the Lord. Give your heart to Him. Give your life to Him. Make Him Lord of all. Put Him first place. I'll do all the things that He wants you to do at all times. And we're to please Him. Over in Philippians, Chapter 2, we're going to deny ourselves, and we're not going to walk in our own ways. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 20, look what he says. He says, I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. He couldn't find anybody who had come to the place of being the same mindset as he had. 
For all seek their own, not the things that are Jesus Christ. <laughs> what an indictment against the Philippians. Boy, they sure weren't on par with what they should have been. They didn't get on board with what they should have been doing. They had a church established there, but it was a selfish church. No man who will naturally care for your state is like-minded. Everybody's seeking their own. We can't be those that seek after our own. We need to seek the things that are Jesus Christ, the things that he wants us to do, and carry these things out. First Thessalonians chapter 2. You see, your relationship with the Lord starts with, number one, you deny yourself. That's the first step. And then you crucify the flesh daily before you get to the place of following him. So we're going to deny ourselves first off. 1 Thessalonians 2, verse 4. As we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God, which tries our hearts. We're going to please God. We're not going to be a man pleaser. We are going to be a God pleaser. That means all those ones who are conducting their, their ministry, pleasing men instead of pleasing God, they're in trouble. Their hearts are going to be tried. And they're going to be found wanting. This is the problem with all the seeker-sensitive churches. These are all the ones that only preach certain things because they don't want anybody to get offended and maybe not want to come because they're building their kingdom instead of God's. No, we're not going to please men. We're going to please God, which tries our heart. We have been given in trust with the gospel, and we're going to hold nothing back whatsoever. All these churches that will not teach the whole counsel of God, they are in trouble. Titus chapter 3, verse 3. We ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, Deceived. What were we doing? Serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. We can't be doing that. God wants you to be wise, to be obedient, to not be deceived, and you don't serve lusts and pleasures. We don't live in malice with attitudes of ill will and envy and hateful and these kind of things. No, not at all. He wants us to live unto him. It says in verse 8, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These are good and profitable unto men. God wants you to do good works. You're going to walk and do the works of God towards men at all times. You're going to be carrying out the things he wants. We see the problem, of course, shown even in the last days as we see what's going on today. 2 Timothy 3, 1. Where just in the very beginning of these days, but it's going to be a whole lot worse down the road. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. They will. We can see we're on the, that road right now. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. We can't be lovers of our own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. You can't walk that way. Without natural affection, hmm. truce breakers, false accusers, slandering people. What goes on in the whole, in, in the, out there in the, the media and everything. They're nothing but a bunch of slanderers. Incontinent, without self-control. I'll just do whatever I want. Fierce. And you get fierce more and more crazy people I want to go kill politicians or because I don't agree with them. They're nuts. Shows you the days we're in. Despisers of those that are good. They despise them. They hate them. Traitors. Heady. These are ones that are reckless, rash, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. What well, sounds like it's talking about the world out there until you get to this place. It says having a form of godliness. This is talking about Christians. This isn't talking about the world. The world already is in a mess. This is talking about those that have a form of godliness. But denying the power thereof from such turn away. And we've got to make sure 
that we're walking in true godliness and we're walking in the power of God and we will not have anything to do with these kinds that are serving themselves. You see, the mighty church, the holy church, the, the church that's going to be the one presented to the Lord will be the one that denies themselves and they're going to walk in the ways of the Lord. They are not going to be a compromised church whatsoever. They are going to follow the ways of the Lord, and that's what God expects. In James chapter 4, this is why you've got to be separate from the things of this world, or you will be affected by it. James chapter 4, verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? That's why we've got to crucify the flesh. We've got to guard all of our members, make sure we're choosing the way of the Lord. Deny ourselves. It says, you lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in war. You have not because you ask not. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon their own lusts. They were out consuming everything on their own lusts. We cannot follow after the lusts. And these are people who are praying. Because the word ask is iteo. These people knew about making a demand of what's due them and Lombano taking hold of them. But they were making a demand amiss. They were all out for their own lusts. Their motivation was wrong. No. We want to do things to serve the Lord. We're going to follow after his ways. Absolutely. Of necessity. You must realize that you're to deny yourself because God has a purpose for you. 2 Timothy 1.9 He has saved us and he's called us with a holy calling not according to our works but according to his own purpose and grace. There's a purpose for your life. It's to glorify God, to serve him, to accomplish the works of God in your life, to see him do the work in you and to bring you to the place of serving him according to his own, own purpose and grace which is given in Christ Jesus before the world began. You have a holy calling. You don't just get saved and then walk and do whatever you want to do. No, you totally deny yourself. And what happens if you don't deny yourself and you're walking in the flesh, then you're not submitted unto him you're, and you're denying him essentially because you're bought with a price and you belong to the Lord. Well, you can't deny him. Remember, you're not your own. 2 Timothy 2.11, it's a faithful saying, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. That's right, because we're brand new on the inside of us. If we suffer, or this means to remain steadfast, it's the word hupomeno, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, that means we haven't denied ourselves, we're walking after our lusts, he also will deny us. However you treat him is how he's going to treat you. You deny him, he is going to deny you. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. No. But he will deny us if we deny him. We've got to walk in the ways of the Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 3, where we looked at, in that verse 2, we to look at this part one again. Men shall be lovers of their own selves. God wants us to deny ourselves. We're not going to be lovers of our own selves. This is where someone is all selfish. He's got his, whole, his own self-interest. It's all he cares about is what he wants. Those Christians are going to go nowhere. You must deny yourself. Otherwise, you will never see God accomplish the things that he purposes in your life. We see over in, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, Verse 3, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. These are people that turn away from the word. After their own loss, they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. I want to hear some new special uh, revelation or something. And that's why you got a lot of these false prophets that are teaching things today all over the place that are contrary to the word. Oh, and they almost want someone to tell them something good. Most of the prophets out there today are telling all these good things are going to happen to them all. Where's the correction coming? Most of the things you see in the Bible, the prophets were calling all the areas in their life that needed to be corrected and straightened out. Not just being goody goodies, you know, and tell them all these great things that I want to hear, you know. We go, these aren't true prophets. 
that are just all saying all these things. They should be calling to repentance on all these areas. Now, these guys aren't during sound doctrine. Get after they're looking for teachers that are going to teach them things that they want to hear instead of hearing the whole truth. 2 Timothy 4.10 For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. We can't love the world. Everything that's in the world is not of the Father, the Bible says. All that's in the world is not of Him. You can't be walking in the ways of the world. If we're walking in the ways of the world, we're in trouble. What does God say to you? Romans chapter 12. In verse 2, look what he says. Be not conformed to this world. We can't be conformed to the world. Or really, the word world here is really age. It's aeon. We can't be conformed to the age. You don't want to follow the way of the, a the world. Or you're going to let the spirit of the world come into you. You don't want the hairstyles all like the all just to be in the in crowd, you know. You got the spirit of the world coming into you. Well, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to let that. And you you follow after those ways. It's going to happen. You're going to well. I got to be like, keep up with the Joneses or dress a certain way or do all these kind of things. That's being conformed to the ways of the world. I got to do certain things to fit in. <laughs> That's what happens to so many young people. Well, I got to fit in so everybody will accept me. That's a mistake. You don't do those things. You are being conformed to the ways of the world. That's not denial of self, is it? No, we need to deny ourselves and we want to be conformed to the Lord's ways. We want to be changed and transformed into His image. We're not trying to fit in with people, we're trying to walk in the ways of the Lord. What happens if you're a friend of the world? James chapter 4, verse 4. You adulteresses and adulteresses. Adulterers and adulteresses. That's what he calls them. Know ye not that friendship of the world's enmity with God? Whoever is a friend of the world is the enemy of God. If you're doing worldly things or engaged in worldly things, you're an enemy of God. Huh. Now, that's not going to get you saved. It's not going to get you in favor with him or blessed. In fact, it makes someone a spiritual adulterer and adulteress, which is someone who has essentially broken covenant with him and turned away from his ways. No, God wants us to choose the way of the Lord. And remember, all the things of the world as we were mentioning, we'll show you the scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 2, it's not of the Father. 1 Timothy 2.15 says, Love not the world. Don't get out in the things of this world. The things, all, neither the things that are in the world, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Well, you can't be right at all. It's impossible. All that's in the world, all didn't mean some. It's all. The lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, it's not of the Father, but it's of the world. And what's going to happen? The world's going to pass away. What's going to happen if you have all the things of the world in you? You're going to pass away. But those who do the will of God are going to abide forever. Deny yourself. Put the word first place. Do the word of God, the will of God and walk in his ways. Also, another way that people deny the Lord instead of denying themselves is they don't do the works of the Lord. Titus 1.16 says, they profess they know God. Almost every Christian out there professes they know God in some manner. But in works, they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and every good work reprobate or not approved, that means. Your works show forth whether you're following the Lord. When he comes to back, he's going to reward us for what? For our works. Not for why well, I was born again. No, he's going to, or because I had a nice attitude, you know, towards the Lord. No, it's your works, it's your actions, because that shows forth your faith. That shows forth the fruit. Your works produce fruit. See? Your fruit's going to what he's going to look at. So, these guys that say they know God, but in works they deny Him, they're in trouble. Your works should show forth that you're following the Lord. Everything you do, all of your deeds, would the Lord approve you of everything that you're doing? In fact, what else? We should not ever be doing worldly things. Titus 2.12 says, Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present age, literally. God wants you to deny ungodliness 
and worldly laws. Stay away from them. That means all the Christians that are got one foot in the world and ungodly things, they're not going to be saved, are they? They're going to be instead, they're going to be the ones that are going to be burned up, tossed aside. Only the ones that are going to be holy and right, righteous, godly, are the ones that are going to be saved, are going to be making it. James, remember those ones that are lawless, that are, they're going to hear, depart from me, you who are working lawlessness. James chapter 1, verse 14, or verse 13 and 14. Here it talks about, Let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth thee any man, talking about with evil. That's the subject here. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. You see, if you deny yourself, will you yield to your own lust? No. You'll yield to what the Lord wants you to do. That means the lusts are there. They're not going away. It depends on whether you're going to yield to them or not. He gets drawn away of his own lust, and he gets enticed. He gets caught, like catching like a bait. You've been hooked, you know. The devil catches you, entices you, and gets a hold of you. When lust conceives, it brings forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, brings forth death. Oh, yeah, those, those lusts, they're going to take you down a road to death. We cannot allow that. That's why... You'll never be drawn away of your own lust if you deny yourself and you crucify the flesh daily and you put the Word of God first place, that you're not going to yield to any of these things. Another thing that's important is being a doer of the Word. If you deny yourself, well, I'm not going to walk on my ways, what am I going to do? What am I going to think on? What am I going to speak? I've got to be thinking and speaking something. I'm a person. What am I going to do? I'm going to get the knowledge of God in me. I'm going to think the Word. I'm going to speak the Word. I'm going to do the Word. I'm going to follow the way of the Word of God. I'm going to follow heaven's ways. James 1.22 But be, or this literally means become, doers of the Word and not hearers only. Otherwise, it says, deceiving your own selves. Remember those scriptures we saw in Proverbs about a man thinks he's right in his own eyes. Oh, he'll be deceived. If you're not a doer of the Word you hear, you are deceiving your own self. Oh, that's the, remember the same way the guy who's building his house on the rock. He's hearing the word, doing it. That guy builds it on the rock and the enemy's attacks won't even shake him. But how about the guy who hears but he's not doing? Oh, he thinks he's okay. He's built his house on sand. He's going to get blown away and he's going to have a great fall, the Bible says. He deceived himself. He thought he was doing okay. Just because you hear the word doesn't mean that it's going to produce any results. We must be doers of the word. In other words, you incorporate the word into your lifestyle. It's common sense. If someone tells you something and you don't do it, have you received that and put it in operation in your life? No. So you have no fruit of it. God expects every one of us to be doers of his word. That means you're going to deny yourself. You can put the word first place. James 1.26, If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, he doesn't watch what words he's speaking, but he deceives his own heart. This man's religion is vain, profitless, devoid of truth, success, results, useless, of no purpose. You mean to tell me I could be born again and I could live my whole life and it would be useless, of no purpose, no success, no results? That's right. Why? Because we don't bridle our tongue. We deceive our own heart. That's pretty strong. A lot of people don't bridle their tongue out there. Their heart's deceived left and right because what you speak is affecting you in your heart. That's why you've got to watch the words you speak. Of course, what's, what, what's going to come out of your mouth? What's out in the abundance of your heart? Whatever you've let in is what's going to come out. That's why the big key is guarding what's coming into you. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will be speaking. Of course, if you don't watch what you speak, you'll deceive your heart more. So guard what's coming into you and guard what's coming out of you. Otherwise, you deceive your heart. James chapter 4, verse 1. We're going to deny ourselves. As we see, Whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? We saw this a moment ago. Your lusts will war against your members against your mind, against your will, and your emotions. 
a war against you and all your members trying to get you to yield to do wrong things. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims. That's what we are. This is not your home. You're born from above. You belong, you're, heaven's your home, remember? You are a stranger and a pilgrim here. Abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Remember, that's the battleground. You've got to stay away from those fleshly lusts. How can I do that? Deny myself and crucify the flesh daily. If I will do that, then I will not have all these wars against the soul. If you're having all these wars against your soul, these battles with feelings and thoughts and, and, and coming in your mind, have you abstained from the fleshly lust and crucified the flesh and denied yourself? No way. We're letting the enemy work against us. In fact, 1 Peter 4, verse 2 says that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. What does God want you to do? Deny yourself, do not live in the flesh to the lusts of men. But instead, you deny yourself and you live to the will of God. So you can stay away from the ways of sin. We cannot allow sin to work in our life. It will take you down a path of destruction. And when you walk in those ways, there's going to be some repercussions that are going to come. Second Peter, even chapter 2 Verse 1 says, There were false prophets also among the people, even as there are false teachers among you, who shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. That's why we've got to make sure we're only hearing the truth. If you're hearing false prophets and false teachers, the blind follow, the blind, you know, lead the blind, they both fall in the ditch, you're in trouble. You're not going to say, well, the guy told me the wrong thing. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You've got to search the scriptures whether they're so. And what's it do? They're, they're leading them down a path of destruction. They end up with destruction because they're not walking in the line with the ways of the Lord. Verse 12. You've got to get yourself knowing the word. These as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things they understand not. Don't go speaking evil of things if you don't understand for sure that it's evil. You just don't speak things that you have no knowledge. Just think that you're authority on it and you know nothing. They'll utterly perish in their own corruption. That's why we got to know things. we got to have knowledge. So we're only going to speak. If you're going to speak against something, you better be right. And we do need to speak against things that are wrong, but we need to be sure that we're speaking according to knowledge and what is right. They'll receive the reward of unrighteousness. There is a reward for unrighteousness. Just like there's a reward for righteousness, which is good, there's a reward for unrighteousness, which is bad. As they count it pleasure to riot in the daytime, spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you, they were having fellowship with them. Yet yeah, these guys were deceived left and right. Having eyes full of adultery, cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, a heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, I mean, these guys are going nowhere. Forsook the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Besor, Bosor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. These guys were following the wrong way. Verse 21. It had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. See, they knew at one point. Then after they've known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. What'd they do? They went back into their old ways. Verse 22, it's happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dogs turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her own wallowing in the mire went right back into the same old ways. You cannot go back into your own ways. You'll never go back into your own ways if you deny yourself and crucify the flesh daily and put the word of God first place. Why do people go back into their old ways? They got their eyes off the Lord. They got their eyes off the word. They obviously have not denied themselves and crucified the flesh, and they went right back into doing what they want to do. 2 Peter 3.3 3 even tells us more about the last days. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, mockers, walking after their own lusts. We cannot walk after our own lusts. 
And then there's others that twist scriptures to try to come in line with, think that they can twist scriptures to, to justify why they're walking in their sinful ways. 2 Peter 3.16 as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things, some these things, which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or twist, this means. This is a word which really means twist. They twist as they do the other scriptures under their own destruction. Well, the Bible really doesn't say this. I think it says this. <laughs> so what? Your interpretation, big deal. I mean, you twist the scriptures, it's going to bring your own destruction. We got to be sure exactly what the scripture says. And you can't ignore the scriptures. Oh, it's going to lead to destruction. Again, these are people that haven't denied themselves. They haven't submitted to the Lord. They haven't put the word of God first place in their life. And then we got the other crowd out there that thinks that, well, it's just automatic grace now, you know? God's grace is toward us all. Oh, that's great. I mean, it doesn't matter what we do, we can do anything we want. That's the one saved, always saved crowd. Look what it says in Jude 4, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men. What was wrong with them? Turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, which is unbridled lust, which means I can do anything I want. You know, that's the guys that say all of our sins are forgiven, past, present, future. <laughs> They're crazy. They're nuts. All these ones once saved, always saved, and think that the, the grace of God, you know, like it didn't matter what I do. I'll, you know, God's grace is, so, so, it will work for me. No, it won't. There's conditions for grace. You won't have any grace whatsoever. God gives grace to the humble, and he resists the proud, doesn't he? We've got to make, walk the walk. These turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. They're essentially denying him if they believe in this grace, grace, hyper-grace teaching, which is so prevalent in many denominations today. Very sad. And all these guys believe once saved, always saved, of course. Verse 16. There's murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts. If you're denying yourself and only speaking what God wants, will you be murmuring? No. Will you be complaining? No. Will you be griping? No. Will you be walking after your own lusts? No. Will you be having men's persons in admiration because of advantage so I can get, you know, if I scratch their back, they'll do something for me kind of a thing, all out for myself? No, because you do not walk a selfish life. This has got to be eliminated from every single one of us. If you're murmuring, complaining, you're in the flesh. We haven't denied ourselves. We shouldn't be murmuring and complaining about anything. We should instead be submitting to God, rejoicing, doing the things He wants, speaking the Word of God, following His ways. That's what He wants. Verse 18. How that they told you there'll be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. This means you cannot do what you want that's not in line with the Word of God. Otherwise, you have not submitted to the Lord, you have not denied yourself, and you're going to be, there's no way you can be following the Lord. We see a lot of people that are not walking right today in the body of Christ. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. The just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. We're not of them who draw back. What happens if you draw back? Oh, it's not a big deal. God will understand. No, that's not what it says. Who draw back into perdition, which is utter destruction and perishing. <laughs> Are these guys saved? No. They're going to be destroyed. But we're those who believe to the saving or preserving of the soul. Remember, we can destroy our soul if we don't deny ourselves and crucify the flesh, which means we walk in the flesh, walk in sin, and do whatever we want. People are kidding themselves. No way. It's not going to happen. You and I must deny ourselves. We must deny yielding to anything that is not of Him and walk in the ways of the Lord. That's what God wants. Over in Acts, chapter 13. 
in verse 22. Here it speaks about David. It says, When he had removed them, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after mine own heart, who shall fulfill all my will. If you're after his own heart, you're not after your own heart. You're after God's own heart. You're not after your will, you're after his will. I want to fulfill his will. I want to do what he wants me to do. And see, when you submit and walk in his ways, what's going to happen? God's going to give you revelation. He's going to bring forth his word to you and show you the way to walk in. He's going to start blessing you. What happens to the guy who hearkens diligently to the voice of the Lord? All the blessings come on and overtake him. You can't even get away from them. What happens to the guy who doesn't hearken? All these curses come upon him and he can't get away from them. If we're having all these curses, it means obviously... We must not be hearkening to the voice of the Lord consistently because if we were, the blessings would be coming on us and overtaking us. God wants us to do what he says and submit unto him. We cannot deny him. We must deny ourselves and walk in the ways of the Lord. In Revelation, Revelation chapter 2, which speaks of the judgment coming on the churches, it even speaks of these ones. Verse 13, he says, I know thy works, where thou hast dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And the devil was really manifested in this place. And how thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. We can't deny the faith. You deny the faith if you don't walk by faith. Because remember, whatever is not a faith is sin. It means you're walking in sin. These guys would not deny the faith. They were holding fast to the things that God told them to do. Over in chapter 3, in verse 8, this is for the church of Philadelphia. He says, I know their works. Behold, I've set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. Thou hast a little strength, power, and you've kept my word. Well, if you've kept the word, that means you denied yourself. You crucified the flesh, and you chose the way of the word. And you didn't deny my name. You've not denied my name. The persecution would come, but they wouldn't turn away from it whatsoever. And so he comes to verse 10 and he says, Because you've kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which will come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Who are the guys that keep the word? The guy who denied himself. Who are the ones that are going to be able to come through victorious in the time of the tribulation? The ones who have kept the word, who have denied themselves who have put the word first place, who are walking in his ways. They'll be kept from the hour of temptation that is going to come upon the earth. And it's going to come. It'll come and it'll bring tremendous judgments that are going to come on the earth. Acts chapter 20. Acts 20, verse 24. He says, None of these things move me, neither count on my life my life dear unto myself. This is the word life here is soul. Otherwise, he wasn't moved by all the, the persecution, all the tax, all the things that came against him. But he had tremendous amount of them. I don't even count my life dear to myself, so that I might finish my course with joy in the ministry which I received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. He said the only thing that's important is I just finish the things that God tells me to do. Because what are we doing? We are training for reigning. We are living today to see what's going to happen in the life to come. Remember those guys all went through the wilderness, which is a time of testing to see who would pass the test? Well, you and I are in our spiritual wilderness in our life. Our life is like a spiritual wilderness, a testing time to find out whether we're going to walk in the ways of the Lord or not. And if we do, then we're going to, of course, be saved. We're the ones that are going to be given rewards and we're going to be blessed, put in positions of some authority in the, in, the, in the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. We want to finish the work. We want to do the things that God wants us to do. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It talks about here in verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, another buildeth thereon. 
Let every man take heed how he builds thereon. Talking about what you're building in your life. We've got to make sure we're building the right thing. Because you are building something. You're either building a house of unrighteousness or you're building a house of righteousness. He goes on and says, Other foundation can no man lay than which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. <laughs> He's not supposed to be building those things. He's supposed to be building the things of the word. Every man's work will be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. All of our works are going to be tried by fire, won't they? The fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Just think. Everything you do have done in life is all going to be tried by fire. Well, is it going to come out okay, or are they going to be all burn up? Anything that's of the Lord will come out okay. Anything that's not of the Lord will all be burn up. What's going to happen? If any man's work abide, ah, this is a good work, because you denied yourself and did the word, that he's built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. The word receive is lambano. He'll be able to take hold of a reward from the Lord. We want to be able to take hold of rewards. If any man's work shall be burned, burned up, he shall suffer loss, injury, damage. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. He's going to make it, but he's going to have a lot. He's going to suffer loss. He's going to have problems that are going to come his way. See, you and I need to put him first place. We need to walk in his ways. Not only build our spiritual house. This is quite a scripture. Luke chapter 12, verse 42 and following. The Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household? Now, that's what we want. We want him to say, Hey, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter in. Have authority over ten cities or whatever. To give them their portion of meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, finds so doing. He's doing the things that the Lord wants him to do. That means he's denied himself. He's walking in line with the word. He's carrying out the things God says to do. Of a truth, I say, and he'll make them ruler over all that he hath. If God finds you and me doing all the things that he says, he will make us ruler. How about the guy that isn't doing it? But if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delays his coming. See, we understand that he's not coming until the church age is over and then it's going to be a tribulation period. But you say, ah, oh, I can just do whatever I want. Ah, oh, you're in trouble. He began to beat his men servants, maidens, eat and drink and be drunken. <laughs> you don't do the things that are right, you're going to be in trouble. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looks not for him, in an hour when he's not aware. He'll cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Your life might be found wanting. <laughs> and that servant, notice what it is about this guy. He knew his Lord's will. So this is talking about someone who, who knew the word at one point. But he prepared not himself. He didn't prepare himself to do it, obviously. Neither, he didn't prepare himself, neither did according to his will. He's going to be beaten with many stripes. Boy, that's quite a statement. And he that knew not, he didn't know because he didn't get the knowledge. But he did commit things worthy of stripes. He's going to be beaten with few stripes. But he's going to get beaten anyway. Otherwise, he's going to have punishment is what it's talking about. <laughs> we don't want to have, we want to be made ruler and not be punished. That's suffering loss, see. Unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And of whom men have committed much, of him will they ask the more. <coughs> you might think, much is given. Well, I don't really want it to be given too much, so I'm not required too much. <laughs> That's a wrong attitude. We've been given all things, haven't we? We've been given the Word of God, and we're supposed to know all the Word. But let's say you've been given much gifts or much things that you're to carry out. Or you've come to knowledge about a lot of things. Much is required. You've got to carry it out. To whom men have committed much of them will they ask the more. Otherwise, 
you're, you're not going to sit around and just rest on, you know, oh, I've done a little bit. No. You're whatever, you know, you're to commit everything to him and you're going to be asked the more and whatever he's given to you, talents, gifts, and so forth, of him shall be much required. Because God is a God who's going to come and use you and multiply and increase you and manifest himself in you and through you. And you're going to bring forth fruit, more fruit, much fruit. You're going to do the works, all the works of God and carry out the ministry of the Lord. We, can't, we want to make sure that we're doing the things that he says. So important. Luke 16. He goes on and says, He that's faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. But he that's unjust in the least, he's unjust also in much. Whatever you deal with, even the little bit, is going to carry over to much. So whatever God sees, you say, well, I, I, I don't want too much, because then I'll be too much required of me. Now, if you don't do right with what the, the little bit you got, you're in trouble. Because if you're unjust in the least, you're going to be unjust in much. And if you are faithful in that, you should want more, because if you're faithful in the little, you'll be faithful in much. And you want to do everything that God wants. The more rewards you're going to have and the more you're going to be in a position of growing up in all the things of God for Him to bless you and to put you in a position wherever He has for you. If therefore you've not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Nobody. That means there's some true riches out there. <laughs> not all this stuff here. And if you've not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? If you rent a car, do you make sure it comes back just like it was your own car? Well, it doesn't matter. You go to a hotel room, do you clean it up just like you clean up your own place? Or say, it doesn't matter, all this is not mine. Wrong attitude. You got to be faithful in everything. No servant can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or so hold to the one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. God wants us to do the things that he wants and to do all the things that are right before him. He wants to bless you. He wants to bring forth great things in our life, and he will do it. So what must you and I do? We must come to the place where we are going to Live unto him. One last scripture before we close. That we began, one of the ones we began with. We're to deny ourselves. We're to crucify the flesh. We're to put him first place. It's all going to be shown by everything you do in your life, whether you denied himself or yourself or not. And as we see in verse 15, he that died for all, they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again. Remember, you're not your own. You're bought with a price. You belong to him. Live unto the Lord. He will bless you. He will heal you. He will deliver you. He will strengthen you. He will empower you. He will bring forth fruit in your life. He'll bring peace. He'll bring blessings. You'll be training for reigning. You'll be ready for God to accomplish the things in your life, not only now, but also he'll bring you to that place he has for you in the life to come. You got to live unto him. Don't live unto yourself any longer. We need to make decisions. We're going to deny ourselves in our own ways. We're going to live unto the Lord. We're going to do exactly what his word says and carry out everything that he's called for us. You do that. God is going to take notice. And remember, he'll make you ruler over all. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you and praise you for the word of God that commands me to deny myself and to take up my cross daily, crucify in the flesh, and following you. I am bought with a price. I belong to you. I deny myself. I crucify this flesh daily. I will live unto you. I will do all that you command. I put the word of God first place. In everything that I do, I thank you, Lord, as I walk in your ways, and I'm obedient in all things, and I hearken diligently unto your voice, and I've given my life unto you, 
to walk in your ways uncompromisingly, your blessings will come on me. You will accomplish your work in my life. I will increase. I will abound. I will have fruit. I will be healed. I will be delivered. I will be prosperous. I will have peace. I will have victory. I will walk in your ways. And I thank you. If as I conquer, I will inherit all things. I make the decision. I'm denying myself. And I'm putting the word of God first place. From this day forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. It means you let go of all your own agenda with the lessons in line with the word of God. If it's in line with the word, great. That's what we want. You're going to see great things happen. There's no way you can follow him without denying yourself and crucifying the flesh first. Most people try to follow him by just doing the word and they haven't denied themselves or crucified the flesh. There's no way you can do it. So we're going to obey and do what God says. Father, I thank you that every one of us has ears to hear what you're saying to us. We thank you. We're going to correct all the areas where we have been walking in our own ways. Father, we are going to deny ourselves, and we're going to live unto you. And we thank you for the great things you're going to accomplish in our life as we come in line with the word of God in everything that we do. I thank you that there'll be much fruit as we hear and do this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God.